here we go again. Today is August 20th. It is actually my granddaughter's first birthday. So Avery, Layla, happy birthday. Mimi loves you. And we are going to tackle a very difficult subject today. So as you tune in, I hope you read the description of today's declaration. Today we are going to be praying over the victims. The victims who have been assaulted, who've been abused, where trust has been shattered. Today we're praying over the wounded soul whose body may, has, may have healed, but their heart and their spirit lay in crumbles. This will be a delicate subject that many, many, many need healing and many of our sisters walk with a limp inflicted by man. They walk with a piece of them gone forever because somebody they loved and trusted stole something and so pray for me as I bring a message of hope. Pray for me as I want to impart healing into the recesses of a heart that has been traumatized and that still may live in a memory, a memory loop that has triggers and trauma and PTSD. Uh, Post-traumatic stress means you're still living in the stress. You're still feeling the pain. And I want to impart such a healing and wholeness through Psalms 91 that you can look back at a past and understand the wound but not feel it anymore. That you see the scar and it still might be tender but it's not open. That you can see areas that you survived where the enemy tried to destroy you. Where he did come near your tent. Where he assaulted your your temple we are going to declare a healing like never before and so if you'll join me right now we're just going to pray I pray that you just um, join me <clears throat> and praying over me as well as we deliver a healing timely and delicate message so let's pray Jesus I just thank you so much that once again we have freedom to come to you. Lord, we pray over our internet. Lord, everything on my part says that my internet is fine, but the enemy just really keeps trampling on the airwaves. So today we ask that you guard and protect the airwaves. I ask, Lord Jesus, that, that the women that are tuning in right now, Father, that you begin to send them to the page, those who are needing healing, they're needing a touch, they're needing the balm of Gilead to a wound that's been filleted in their lives for years. I ask, Lord Jesus, for those who have been calling out for help in a, a particular place in their life, Father, and they are wanting answers, they have questions, Lord. I ask, Father, you send them, you send them to this page, send them to this message. If you have a word for them today, God, send them to this message. Let us together unify, declare, speak, proclaim, prophesy Psalms 91 over our sisters, over each other, over the wounded, the broken, the assaulted, Father, the one that's been traumatized, the one that's still broken, the one that is crumbled. Father, you're close to the brokenhearted. You save those who are crushed in spirit. And what man meant for evil, man, what man meant for evil, God, you will turn for good. I know you work all things together for our good. So, Father, I thank you that you turn pain into a purpose and that you take these moments of violation and, and hurt and turn them into victories and motivation for healing and healing others. Lord, anoint my words today. Anoint the ears to hear. Father, prepare the hearts to receive. Father, and I ask that you encompass today in Jesus' mighty name, amen. Lady Ice, I hope I'm coming in loud and clear. I do know I have some internet issues, so just keep commenting and letting me know that I am live and, and moving on. So 
let's get ready to declare Psalms 91 over the victim. So here's what, here's what I know. That the most recent studies that have came in, now I don't know how true or accurate these are, these are the most recent studies, that one in five women have been sexually abused in one way or another. That means it could be fully, fully um, violated, um, and by that I mean like rape and penetration. It's just a gross word we have to even address because it's, it's a reality that somebody's living. So we should be able to talk about what somebody's having to live through and heal from. So let's remove the shame of what's been done and put the shame on the one who's done it. The shame on the one who has created the trauma. We are not gonna let a victim feel responsible for what has happened to them because that is nonsense. Instead, we're going to remove all responsibility of them feeling any responsibility at all in their situation. And we are going to declare such a healing restoration and a dismantling of a false shame that has no business being in a life that has been violated or insulted by man. And so the most recent studies say that one in five women have been sexually abused. If this is true, that means that nearly 300 women on our page alone has endured some way, shape, or form of sexual abuse in their life. That's disheartening. That is one in five. One study said one in six. One study said one in three. So, you know, bringing it all into one in four, I feel like that's, or one in five, that's a, that's a safe place between four and five. Now, when I was in school, nobody talked about it. And there was, there was just this, he's a creeper, or don't stay the night at his house. There was just this obvious presence that nobody discussed. And you know what makes me mad about that? Is because women are losing their voice. Women are losing their voice in their ability to stand up, speak up, and resist. They're losing their voice in this. And so today I want to empower the one who feels like she's lost her voice. I want to empower the one who feels like she's been silenced, manipulated, shamed, or even coerced into keeping it a secret. I want to, I want to bring liberty. I want to speak freedom to that one woman that, or that young woman, that old woman, the one who has lived with the secret and packed it around because they don't want to embarrass a family member. Can we, just, can we just uncover this ugly mess right now? That, that the responsibility of protecting your abuser is nonsense. It's nonsense. And so today, I want, alle I want to alleviate you of any responsibility. You do not have to protect the one who wounded you. You release them to Jesus. Let him do what he wants to do. And I have very little mercy. I know the word says that we need to love justice and have mercy or... Maybe it's the have mercy and love justice. But here's the thing. I will leave justice to the Lord because our part today is your healing. Our part today is your restoration. The part that we are declaring today is your wholeness. You are not to live as a wounded victim anymore. You are to live as a healed, victorious woman. Come on, somebody. That's for you. You are created to live healed and victorious. And to be healed, it means you have to confront a wound. The picture that the Lord gave me with this was I saw when I started asking the Lord about what today was going to be. And he said, I want you to speak Psalms 91 over the victim. And I knew when he said victim that it was the sexually abused victim. Now I know we're talking, there is physical abuse out there too that people have, have violated you physically. And so we are going to speak over those places. But when the Lord said Psalms 91 over the victim, I took a screeching halt. I went, how can that be God? How can that be? I felt this personally. One, because I have been a victim. And two, Psalms 91 is all about protection. And there's this question that victims have, that we've had, that says, if God is God, why didn't he rescue? Why didn't he protect? And Psalms 91 declares protection. It, it declares um, a covering. It declares a rescuing. It's a refuge. And so when you've been wounded, 
and you read scriptures like this, you have to take it to a different level. So here's how the Lord gave me a picture of how to describe it. And I hope it resonates with you. How, am I coming in clear, girls? Am I, am I, am I um, bringing, it, bringing this in? Are you, are you catching it? When we take scripture that looks like it contradicts what we're feeling, it contradicts what we've experienced. It contradicts a situation in our life that says God rescues, he redeems. And then we look at ourselves and we're like, well, he didn't rescue. He abandoned. Well, he didn't, he didn't come to, he didn't come. I had to grow up and get out of it. Here's what I have to say to this. There's a couple of things. One, you're still here. You're still here. And so there's a part of you that is understands that you have survived but we need to move on to thriving and two men fail people fail the world is fallen and when that happens like it did with Joseph and his brothers it did with Dinah there's plenty of scriptures to show where assault came wounds came violation came to mark was raped by her half-brother and there was no rescue in the moment but there's healing and there's vengeance that comes the Lord has clear he has clear warnings for those who touch his beloved who touch the apple of his eye who come and assault and wound it's better for a millstone to be thrown around their neck I mean, if you've ever seen a millstone, you understand it's an instant plummet to the depths of the sea. I'm okay with that, just so you guys know. I'm not here to talk about the mercy on, on somebody who victimizes. I'm here to talk about the healing for somebody who's been wounded. So just hear my heart in this. I'm not a bitter soul. I'm not. I'm a healed person who is totally fine with Jesus doing what he wants to do with who, who he wants to do it with. And I've seen restoration in people who have been victimizers. But that doesn't mean there's restored relationship. It just means their bodies and their minds are submitted to Jesus. But let me get on to the picture that the Lord gave me. I saw a war raging outside the walls of a tent. I saw a wounded veteran laying inside, a wounded soldier laying inside a hospital tent a hospital this is a war zone hospital and this soldier is laying in a cot healing he'd been blown up and he's laying in the cot and he's healing and the war is still raging it feels like thin walls if you've ever seen a tent hospital mash would be a good picture these thin walls between you and the war zone but somehow that place is where you're healing but you can still hear the war you can still smell the war you can still physically experience the atmosphere of the war while you're tucked away in a healing place see while the soldier is being healed his wounds are being attended to wrapped and medicated the broken places are being braced burns are being coated with salve but it's the mind and the heart that now needs the king to come and enter. Only King Jesus has access to the recesses of the hidden parts of our heart. As your body physically heals, the maker, keeper, and redeemer wants to heal the broken places in your soul. He wants to pour oil of gladness over your despair. And he wants to build you from your ashes and create something beautiful. Today, I want you to know this. His love is perfect untainted, pure. His perfect love can perform miracles where man's created trauma. The miracle of being better healed than if you were never wounded. And I mean that. You can be even greater, more whole because of his touch. Because his touch heals where another inflicted hurt. His touch is safe where another's was harmful. His touch imparts holiness where another's left shame. Psalms 91 is the hospital room for you today. Psalms 91 is a place where the Lord says, come here and heal. 
come here and let me remove the shame. I sent you to this earth and man assaulted you. I imparted to you a job and an assignment and somebody you loved or trusted or somebody you don't know hurt you, wounded you, violated you. I was reminded of a story in 2 Samuel 10 where a king died and David had compassion on the son who took the throne. And so David sent ambassadors to offer comfort. He sent his people to somebody to say, we hear you, we understand you, we have relationship with you, and we're sorry for your loss. And the, the son of the king seized David's ambassadors. He was, in, he was threatened by them. He was afraid of David. David had power. And so the king, the now king, saw the ambassadors of the reigning king of Israel and he felt threatened by the power that came with David. And so in order to insult the king, he assaulted his servants. In order to insult and wound the king, he assaulted and violated the ambassadors. Is anybody hearing a parallel with this? Is it just me? So here's what the king did. The evil king shaved off half their beards. Now this might sound like no big deal and it is when it comes to talking about being violated, but the representation of it is it removed honor. Years of growth years and not only did he he didn't just shave it all off he shaved half of it off to humiliate and embarrass them then he stripped them of their clothes from the backside and exposed them so that just their butts were hanging out I know it's a picture that is again not as violent as we would as women have experienced in sexual assault but I want you to hear the spiritual connection because one is removing honor and stripping you of your honor where it's displayed the other one is exposing you exposing your the, the private places and creating this shame so you have one where honor's removed and another where shame is imparted. Now these men went with good intent. They went with good intent to forge relationship. They were representations of a kingdom where relationship was already established and the king, the evil king was threatened. And so the only way that he could inflict King David was to wound the ambassadors. But when David heard what happened, he sent messengers to tell the men. And this is the part that I feel like we need to anchor to. He said, stay in Jericho until your beards grow out, then come back. Because the men felt deep shame because of their appearance. See, David's first instinct wasn't revenge, it was healing. His first instinct for his ambassadors, his representatives, was for them to heal, to have their honor restored, to have their, their bodies covered again. But it doesn't mean that a strike wasn't in the making because David was assembling a war. Uh, he was getting his soldiers together and he was ready to act. But you know what? These men were tucked away healing. They were tucked away growing back their honor, healing from shame. Can you hear me in this? Can you hear me in what God is wanting to say to you today? Right now, his intent for you is to tuck you away to heal. You know what Jericho means? A place of fragrance, but it also has a connection of time with it. So hear me, that Jericho can represent anointing oil, the fragrant oil. You have things like we see the anointing oil, the perfume poured out on Jesus. 
It was a place where you prepared things not only for burial, but it was an offering. And then this, this calendar picture that comes with Jericho is time. So sometimes our healing takes time. Growing a beard back takes time, especially the beards back then. They were big beards. They were long beards. They weren't these little, not the little soul patch beard. These men, it took time for them to restore their honor. And this is telling us it's okay for our healing to take time. But the intent of our healing is to be tucked away, getting under the oil, getting under the fragrant oil. Let something die. Let it be a sacrifice. Let something, something is gone, it's dead. Let the anointing oil come over it. Let the sacrificial fragrant oil embalm it and let it resurrect something in you. Take that time to heal. David sent his broken, wounded, ashamed ambassadors away to heal. And while they were healing, David was assembling an army. I want you to know that Jesus can do both of these things for you. While you are healing, you have no idea what's going on in the violator's life. It might look like they're getting away with things. It might look like that they, they didn't even have a consequence. It might look like they, they got away with violating and nobody believes you. Your king believes you and he's tucking you away and he is creating you a safe place to heal. Tuck away in him. You've survived. You're here today. If you're in a situation of abuse, get out. If you can't get out, you ask for help to get out. It is okay. If you've been silenced and haven't spoke up because you're afraid of tearing apart a family, let me alleviate you of that. It's not your job. That person already tore apart the family. It's not your job to hold a family together by covering the abuser. Your job, your job is to heal. And part of your healing might be actually uncovering the sin of somebody else. And I know that's hard. It took years for me to even address, speak out, and tell what happened to me. But I know God gives us strength, grace, and courage to confront things that try to destroy us. And oh, the healing that comes. Oh, the healing that comes. Because if you can confront it, you can get victory in it. So let's make Psalms 91 your shelter your secret place. Let's together pray Psalms 91 over the one. Let's take Psalms 91 like a hospital room, like a war zone hospital room where things still might look like they're hurting and raging, but God is tucking you away to say, come here, come away, come away. Let me help you. I want to heal you. I know man intended harm. I know these things happened. This was not part of his will. It was not part of his will. In the same way, he doesn't stop you from sinning. He didn't stop them from sinning. But he can certainly begin the healing process. And I think of, I think of the, the story of Naaman where he was a man of leprosy and he needed to dip in the water seven times. Maybe you've gone before the Lord for healing in this area of trauma over and over and over again. It takes a while to grow a beard back, girls. Keep dipping in the water. It takes a while to start feeling whole again, but keep dipping in the water. Keep tucking in under the wing. Keep getting under the shadow. Take Psalms 91 as your hospital room and rest in it today. I want to speak this over you. If you want to join and speak it over yourself today, do it. Otherwise, let us as a team speak it over you because we are coming together. And we, once again, are dispatching a mobile kingdom. The kingdom of God is mobile. He's not a mobile home. He's a mobilized kingdom. Everywhere we go, the kingdom of God goes. So we are sending, once again, a mobile kingdom to cover our beautiful, beautiful people that are, that are healing today. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the fowler's snare 
and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. It's the king of kings acting right there. You will see the punishment. Vengeance is for his, the Lord's. If you make the most high your dwelling place, even the Lord who is my refuge, then no harm will befall you. No disaster will come near your tent. Imagine yourself tucked away in a hospital tent and you hear the war, but you know you're safe now. You know you're in a place of healing. Tuck deep in, hide in the cleft of the rock, feel, understand, and connect to the covering of this chapter here. You might be hearing, feeling, and smelling memories, but you are tucked away in the cleft of the rock. He will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands and you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the dragon. Because she loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue her. I will protect her, for she acknowledges my name. She will call upon me and I will answer her. I will be with her in trouble. I will deliver her and honor her. Delivering and honoring. This is a king acting. This is a king tucking. This is a king healing. With long life, I will satisfy her and I will show her my salvation. What a powerful covering and scripture. Every day I read this, it becomes more and more alive. Every day, every single time I, I crack open the Bible and I read Psalms 91, I see new things. I have asked the Lord, help me have new, fresh things. And when he said, take Psalms 91 and make it a hospital for the victim. I went, what does that look like? And I will tell you girls, I'm familiar with a son healing in a war hospital, in a military hospital while the war, war is raging. I couldn't get to him. I couldn't get to Afghanistan where he was injured and healing and being cared for. All I could do was dispatch heaven to him. All I could do was understand that God Almighty was with me and with him. And it's the same thing. Maybe something happened and, and your mother didn't rescue you, your father didn't rescue you, somebody that you thought should have come to your rescue didn't get there. Well, today we're dispatching heaven to cover you, to heal you, for you to feel the anointing, fragrant oil that time, time, in the presence of God can do more and it can actually be quicker than you ever imagined what can take years of counseling and go to counseling if you need it but the presence of Jesus can do so much keep dipping in the water keep 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 tucking in under his wings I love you I'm praying for you and I speak restoration over every area that has felt trauma abuse or victimized. I love you girls.